Centurions were the backbone of the Imperial Roman army. Unlike their generals, they commanded their men from the front, and represented all the qualities of a perfect soldier. They were intelligent, brave, loyal, and rightfully paid 15 times the wage of a regular soldier. After a centurion was recruited, their records were carefully registered and stored in the Imperial Army lists, which contained over 3,000 active centurions in their careers. And being the outgoing channel you know us to be, we selected the three most impressive of them, which will surely spike your interest and make you want to meet them in person. You may know from our previous video on the ranking system that most centurions simply rose through the ranks of the legions, but today's three specimens got their ranks in very unique ways, and were never actually soldiers before. Their careers will surely give you a deeper insight into the system of recruitment of the Roman army. But before we go on, I would like to give a shout out to our sponsor, Bloodline Heroes of Lethas. It is a free fantasy RPG mobile game that allows you to build your kingdom and collect new champions as you progress. Even better, you can create your own legendary champions by combining the bloodlines of elves, demons, orcs, dwarves, and more. After their big recent update, there are now over 800 different hybrids between any two bloodlines, which not only lets you inherit their traits but also their unique appearances, passed down from each family tree and merged into one. New fantasy characters are being released into the game every month, which means the possibilities are endless for you to seek out the greatest hybrid champion to suit your style. The game also has a wide range of interesting storylines and beautiful graphics and art. If you download the game for free through our link in the description, you will receive a special starter pack worth $20. You can also participate in their Halloween event and obtain a free vampire champion on the seventh day. So click the link below and play today. As the highest respected bodyguards of the emperors, and many times their assassins, the Praetorian Guard had a very sinister reputation in Roman history. Surprisingly for us, however, many of them enjoyed prestigious careers in the legions after being discharged from the guard. Their administrative skills, rigorous drills, and social connections meant that the doors for a centurionate in the legions were wide open for them. And our first centurion, Decimus Furius Octavius Secundus, was one of them. Born near Rome, his career began when he enlisted into the urban cohorts, the garrison units of the city of Rome. There, he must have done a very good job, as he was soon recruited straight into the 6th cohort of the Praetorian Guard, and served under the reign of Trajan. Here, he was able to quickly impress the tribune leading his cohort, who promoted him to his personal bodyguard, and then to his beneficiarius. This tells us that not only his prowess in combat, but also his wit and intelligence were very impressive. In time, this got him noticed by the Praetorian Prefect himself, who stood as the right hand of Emperor Trajan and commander of the entire Praetorian Guard. And he chose Decimus to be his personal bodyguard. Now with the connection to the Prefect, he was able to secure a promotion to Optio and then to Signifer of his cohort making him responsible for managing the savings and finances of his Praetorian century of 80 men. This goes to show that Decimus was an impressive administrator and accountant, but his career didn't stop there, as he excelled even at this task, and he was subsequently elevated to overseer of the entire Praetorian treasury, managing the payments and logistics of every cohort of the guard. From here, he was finally promoted to Cornicularius of a Praetorian tribune, the main administrative position of a whole Praetorian cohort, where he spent the rest of his service managing staff work. After being discharged from the guard and completing his 16 years of service, Decimus was now in his mid to late 30s, but believe it or not, he was only in the low point of his highly impressive career. His skill and talent was not forgotten, and shortly after he was handpicked by Emperor Hadrian himself and re-enlisted as an evocatus, a respected veteran officer. After accepting the offer, he was given the rank of Centurion and transferred to the 10th Fertensis Legion, stationed in Judea, where he took part in suppressing Bar Kokhba's rebellion. And if you dare think his role in it was not as significant, you'll have to think again, as he is recorded to have earned a golden crown for killing an enemy in single combat, and several other lesser decorations for bravery, which were bestowed upon him by Emperor Hadrian himself. His exploits in Judea earned him a transfer to the 1st Italica Legion in Moesia, and luckily for the natives, they did not have any plans of rebelling against Decimus. Despite this, the man was still able to slowly rise to the rank of Primus Pilus, the highest-ranking centurion in the whole legion, 
and if you recall, there are 59 other Centurions in a Legion, and his salary would now be four times that of a regular Centurion. At this point, Decimus has basically completed the Game of Life, and achieved the highest possible rank, salary, and social class for a man of his low birth. But fate would still have him rise higher. As gratitude for his service in the Guard and Legions, he was granted the high honor of being enrolled as a municipal senator in a Roman colony, thus forever elevating his family's social status and wealth. Now that is one very impressive career. If you thought Lucius Varinus' career in HBO's Rome was too exaggerated, Decimus would have made him pale in comparison. What we learned is that Centurions did not only rise from the ranks of the Legions, but also could come from the Praetorian Guard, which is a completely separate entity from the Legions. But if you thought this was impressive, the next career will surely surprise you even more. Like father, like son. Or at least, so believed the Romans. For them, the achievements and skills of the father were passed down to their sons, so even the sons of former centurions were expected to follow the footsteps of their illustrious fathers and bring glory and prestige to the family. Such was the case for our next two characters, Marcus Petronius Fortunatus Sr. and his son, Marcus Petronius Fortunatus Jr. Elder Marcus was born in Africa in the mid-2nd century. We have no details of his upbringing, but we can safely assume that he was literate and skilled with numbers. Such skills earned him the rare distinction upon enlistment to serve as a librarius, or bookkeeper, in the First Italica Legion. Once in Moesia, Fortunatus rose through the ranks at an incredible speed. In just four years, he rose to Tesserarius, then to Optio, Signifer, and finally to Centurion, by popular vote of his comrades. A quite meteoric rise but nothing compared to what awaited him. In the course of his long career as Centurion, Old Marcus served in no less than 13 different legions, including the 1st Italica, 7th Claudia, 1st Minervia, 10th Gemina, 2nd Audiutrix, 3rd Augusta, 3rd Gallica, 30th Ulpia, 6th Victrix, 3rd Cyrenaica, 15th Apollinaris, 2nd Parthica, and 1st Audiutrix. Quite literally almost half the legions of Rome. Marcus's service in the army allowed him to visit almost every province in Rome and spread his experience to countless people. On top of all this, he must have been a very impressive soldier, as his bravery against the Parthians was awarded with chest decorations, together with a bracelet and one of the most prized awards of the Roman army, the Walled Crown, for being the first man to scale the walls of an enemy city. His military service did not preclude him from raising a family, he married a respectable Roman woman who gave birth to his son, Marcus Petronius Fortunatus Jr., among others. Quite interestingly, when his son joined the army, he was immediately promoted to Centurion of the 22nd Primigenia on the Rhine, no doubt thanks to his father's influence. And this was crazy if you think about it. In a previous video, I mentioned how hard it was to climb the ladder to become a centurion, and that it took recruits anywhere from 13 to 20 years together with a wide set of talent and skills to get it. But now we have proof that the sons of former centurions were given a significant head start to their careers. But unfortunately for young Marcus, his career was cut short when he died after only serving for six years. His mother and now 80-year-old father, Elder Marcus, were no doubt desolated by the loss of their son. Young Marcus benefited from his father's deeds and reputation, but our next character exploited such advantage to the maximum. Lucius Aemilius Paternus was born a member of the Equestrian Order from the town of Aeso in the late 1st century. His family were Romanized natives, with his father being a local magistrate and very respectable member of the community. With his influence and reputation, he was able to secure Lucius a position of centurion of the 7th Gemina, the local legion in the area. After briefly serving there, he was transferred to the Danube frontier, where he served as centurion in three other legions, the 1st Minervia, 7th Claudia, and 14th Gemina. In the latter legion, his skill and talent must have caught the eye of the upper echelons of the imperial administration, as he was promoted to centurion of the 4th Urban Cohort, one of the garrison units stationed in Rome. But his career didn't stop there, as he later became a centurion of the 4th Cohort of the Praetorian Guard. This was a very impressive position, but it seems Lucius was an even more impressive man, as he soon managed to rise to the rank of Trecenarius, his cohort's highest ranking centurion, and second in command to its commander tribune. We don't know how long he served in that post, only that he was later transferred again to the legions, serving as a centurion of the 2nd Augusta in Britain. 
And if this sounds like a bit of a downgrade for Lucius, you need not worry, as he was soon able to rise to the rank of Primus Pilus, and became the lead centurion of the entire legion. During his long and distinguished service, he took part in Trajan's Dacian Wars and invasion of Parthia, where he too was awarded with the walled crown by the emperor himself, plus other minor decorations. But Lucius was not the only family member with a distinguished career. His brother Marcus was able to outdo him by reaching the rank of military tribune, bringing glory and fame to the whole family, while their sister Emilia is recorded to have been a priestess for life in the province of Tarraconensis, also a great honor. This string of highly successful careers may have been deserved, but there is no denying that it was their father who pulled the strings to make it happen, at least in the start of their careers. And so, we have centurions recruited from Praetorians, from sons of former centurions, and now simply sons of equestrians and provincial aristocrats, who were able to secure high positions for their family through connections. And it's not only family members, but also friends whose careers they could help. This was the case of Caius Julius Lepidus, the best friend of one of the brothers and fellow equestrian of the same town. It was thanks to this friendship and connection that Lepidus also became a centurion in the seventh Gemina right away, and continued his career until he also rose to Primus Pilus, but of the legendary 13th Legion. So you can take away three major facts from this video. Firstly, it seems the origins were of secondary importance when it came to being a good candidate for a centurion. Secondly, connections and social class were a big advantage that could save you years of climbing the ladder, as it still is today. And thirdly, the rank of Centurion was a portal that could forever transfer skilled soldiers and their children to a higher social class and wage, which would otherwise be near impossible in the Roman system. After all, it's rumored that Emperor Vespasian was also the grandson of a Centurion. Speaking of Emperors, check out our video on what it was like to be one, if you haven't already, or visit our series on Roman ranks and training. As always, this video would not be possible without our generous patrons. Consider joining them and forever having your name in our videos. I hope to see you in the next one.